Let's pray together. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Again, we are beginning this uh, walk through the Bible, starting right at the beginning, starting in Genesis. And this is going to be, I think, an amazing 31 weeks in God's Word, again, from beginning to end. Uh, Coco's already mentioned uh, to go ahead and bring, get, pick up a book if you haven't already. It basically is a companion to the Bible. So the story is the NIV scriptures put in together in, a, would say, a digestible way. If you really want to go all out and do the whole Bible and get a Bible reading plan together for that, God bless you. But this will highlight, again, the key themes throughout scripture from creation all the way to Revelation. So if you haven't already, we'd love to have you grab one of those and, uh, and get in a community group too. If you haven't gotten in a community group, that's the way I think that groups are going to be able to grow or individuals will grow and uh, deeper in the Word of God. So I can't say enough about the importance of that. And uh, there's in fact even a group meeting right now at 9 o'clock to go a little deeper into the Word as well. Um, I love that little picture that I was sent of Devin and a reminder to get into the Word, right? Look at that. Analyze it. Go deeper. Whatever you need, to, whatever tools you need to do that, go for it. And uh, there he is already getting into it, and you'll have a little reading assignment. I'll even leave with you at the end today as well to continue on as we move forward. But I want to uh, mention, uh, as we think about the start here of the story, uh, there was a little boy who uh, he went to visit his grandmother, and the grandmother was wonderful at teaching her grandson about the Bible. And they were talking about creation. And they were talking about reading through the Bible, uh, talking about how Adam and Eve ate that forbidden fruit that uh, God told them not to eat from that certain tree, and they did. And, you know, the whole story, you know, they realized they were, didn't have clothes, they were ashamed. And the boy was really thinking about this, and, and he was kind of, uh, as grandma was making lunch, he's, he's looking through his Bible, and uh, as he turns some of the pages of this well-worn and used Bible, there was something fell out of the Bible. Oh, what was it? It was some of those pressed leaves. You know how sometimes people will press something in their Bible and have these colorful leaves? And uh, the little boy talked to Grandma, and he goes, Look, Grandma, I think I just found Adam's suit. <laughs> yes. yeah. There it was. He remembered that story, right? Ooh, yeah, they had to cover themselves up. Whew. Well, as we go through the Bible, uh, I don't know, unless you have other kind of neat things in your Bible like that, I don't know that Adam's suit will fall out of your pages of your Bible. But we are reminded that God's truth continues to fall upon all who invest their hearts, their minds, their lives in the study and the, in the Word of God. That's what will fall upon you and fall into your heart, I pray. Just that more love for the Lord, more love for His Word, and continue to change your life. And we're going to go through these uh, five uh, as we look deeply into the Word, we're going to go through these five movements, you could say, that kind of are one way of looking at the totality of, of God and His Word and His promises. Uh, the story of the garden, Israel, Jesus, the church, and then the new garden, right? Getting us back, back to, you could say, where we started. And um, I'm going to start with this very beginning uh, paragraph, story, verse that uh, gets us to uh, this creation account of the beginning of life as we know it. And um, as we do that, I want to just introduce you. I think there's so many ways that illustrations, I don't care what age you are, from the youngest to the oldest, these simple illustrations kind of mm, center us on a verse or a passage of Scripture. So take a look at this simple illustration of the very beginning. In the beginning, the earth was a dark, empty blob. God spoke and created the entire world. Light, sky, fish, birds, and animals. 
Then God said, let us make human beings in our own image and created man out of dirt. And the man became a human being named Adam. And after six days of work, God took a rest. God then put Adam in a garden where there were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told Adam, eat from any tree except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat from it, you will die. Eventually, God caused the man to fall asleep, took out one of his ribs and created a woman who Adam oh. named Eve. God joined Adam and Eve together in marriage. Later, a serpent came and convinced Adam and Eve to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, saying they would become like God if they did. Eve took a bite, and then so did Adam. Because of this choice, God cursed the serpent as well as Adam and Eve and forced them out of the garden, away from the tree of life. Outside the garden, Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain was a farmer and Abel was a shepherd. When they made sacrifices, God accepted Abel's sacrifices of animals, but not Cain's sacrifice of crops. This made Cain so angry that he murdered Abel. People began to populate the entire earth, and wickedness and tragedy continued to spread. God regretted ever making human beings and decided to wipe them from the face of the earth. But God found one man, Noah, who walked faithfully so God instructed Noah to build a giant boat called an ark and to take his entire family along with a male and female of every kind of animal onto the boat. For 40 days it rained and the entire earth was flooded, wiping out every living thing, plants, animals, and humans, all of it destroyed. Eventually, the flood stopped and the ark came to rest on dry land. Noah and his family came out of the ark, and God made a promise that the entire earth would never again be completely flooded. God put a rainbow in the sky as a reminder of this promise, and God looked for someone to bless the entire world. So that's where we summarize today's message with and we start again with being in the garden in creation and that reminder very powerful first verse in the beginning god and you can see that right there as you open your bibles if you want to follow along some of these just core themes we'll be covering even this morning and the story the that again that passage of course is right there as you look to the very first section of the the story in the beginning god in the beginning god created and that's the main person, the main character, you could say, and, and then we see these, after in the beginning God, we see the next seven words that tell us everything, God created the heavens and the earth. And as you conclude, there's a creator God. Uh, frankly, God can do what he wants to do, right? Over a billion years, over a nanosecond, God created, and it is here that God created this world for you and for me. And as we think about the creation and how God created, uh, it's interesting to kind of look at uh, maps and why and where. And uh, there's a picture here, um, and you can see the little red tree there, the, kind of that uh, glimpse there again of, uh, of the Middle East. And uh, the God created Eden. The Bible tells us where the Tigris and Euphrates River intersect, down by the Persian Gulf, kind of in the modern-day Iraq, I guess you would say. And uh, it just it made it interesting to look at, yeah, these are, this word of God isn't some fable, isn't some fiction, right? It's real people, real places, real times. And as God created, uh, we look at this, uh, this uh, place and we think about how God placed the crowning achievement, the apple of his eye, he created us, right? People in his image. And God created all these amazing this amazing universe all the galaxies and even the one of the most crowning points of god's creation as well in the whole natural scheme was the state of oregon right would you agree think about your favorite place that you've been or if somewhere you've been maybe even this summer or just even today driving in whatever you saw if you noticed or looked around yeah it's pretty amazing what god has has made and thinking about people that god made as we think about the first people we think about adam and eve 
And I love this uh, statement that I try to affirm often to, to all people, right? God is behind creation, and also that you are not an accident. You were not created by chance. And you matter. Relationships matter to God. People matter to God. And as you just sink that reminder into your heart and think about how God came to be with us, God came to be with Adam and Eve, um, we, uh, we also see that within creating people, God gave freedom. And God gave Adam and Eve freedom as he gives us freedom to choose. And there was that clear graphic example of the two trees in the middle of the garden, the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If they ate from the tree of life, right? God symboling, embracing the vision of life together, but don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And sadly, they did. Or you could say we did. We chose apart from God too. And I think about Adam and Eve and the choices that they are offered. Adam and Eve, the first two people, reject God's vision and are escorted from the garden. People reject God. We reject God, his plan, his vision for us. And uh, it's interesting when you think about that uh, forbidden fruit, um, you know, and sometimes people have thought, oh, was it an apple? No, there's no word of an apple in the, uh, in the Bible. Um, and he, yeah, it wasn't an apple after all. The psychologists have concluded there's no way a woman would give up everything for an apple. So they've concluded more accurately that the forbidden fruit was chocolate. <laughs> so, sorry, had to add that little. But again, the point being, choosing apart from God, rejecting God's vision. Both Adam and Eve together guilty, and now they've chosen, they could have chose good or chose evil, and choosing the wrong option, choosing to for, fall on the things against God. There's shame, there's vulnerability. Uh, really, you could say it's covering up. You think about the, the items they now feel they need to cover up themselves from a, a, each other, uh, defensive mode ever since. Sound familiar? Sound like human nature covering up? And uh, we see then the sin nature that continues to affect and infect me and you and the first, continually the people that uh, even after Adam and Eve. And so you see in Cain and e Abel, okay, here we go. There's this still tendency. There's this desire and um, there's choices uh, God's pleased with Abel's sacrifice, but not with Cain's, and Cain has two choices, right? He's either going to say, okay, I need to learn from my brother how to bring a good sacrifice to God, and okay, I want to grow in that. But, and even God sees that, oh, we better have a little, little communication here. Remember, okay, uh, remember Cain, sin's crouching at your door, desires to have you, rule over it, I can help you. But that day, what did Cain choose? Right? He chose ultimately evil in its clearest form, killing another person, killing even his own brother. So that sin infection continues and uh, that, uh, that characteristic continues to be passed down. And we see that reflected in and throughout Scripture. And let's just admit, we've prayed a prayer of confession already this morning, but let's together confirm and affirm, sadly, our condition. Let's read this verse together. The psalmist writes, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. From Psalm 51. That sin, difficult principle, we need to admit and recognize, right? I'm human. You're human. We're descended from Adam. Sin, sadly, is a part of our condition. And apart from God, that's all we're left to. But God continues to make a way. Um, in the, as we think about uh, the human condition, though, sin continued to grow in Adam and Eve. 
uh, in, the fam- in the people that continued to, uh, uh, to populate the earth. The Lord regrets, it says in Genesis 6, if you're paging through a little bit, Genesis 6, 6, Genesis 6 uh, verses 5 and 6, it says that the Lord had regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. What an awful declaration. Right? The Lord regretted he had made people. Deeply troubled. But again, be grateful that the story does, didn't end there. And the story doesn't ever end there. And God will do whatever he can to bring us back to him. Amen? Whatever it takes, God is saying, I will search you out. I will seek you until uh, all that I can do. Although we all have a choice, but I will seek you out. Desiring to find us and to rescue The, the sad part, again, as we think about these earliest days of history, um, as we think about God launching this plan to get us back, is that it had to start with this, though. In this time and place, we see that uh, the Lord says, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I've created. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So the depravity was so great that this was God's solution. It had to be done, but it wasn't without a, a hope and a future, a promise, as we see in Noah. And uh, Noah is, is a good plan, but there's also a problem with this plan. As we can sense, Noah is also a, a human. Noah also has sin. And there still is that sin virus that they both bring on the boat and that they both carry off the boat as well. But God is relentless in his promise, and he promised he would never flood the earth again. As he says, I will establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And so as we see this sequence, right, from everything being perfect in the garden till this tragic events that unfold from Cain killing his brother to the, the, the ways that God was even grieving that he had created people to a new plan. Okay, I'm going to still make a way and I'm going to use Noah in his broken state even. We're reminding again the promises of God are faithful and true. And it's not based on anything that I deserve. Let's remember that too. I don't have God's promises uh, that uh, he shares with me because I am so great or, or wonderful. Same with you, right? The promise is based on God's desire to get us back in the garden, to get us back in relationship with him. That's what God has done throughout history, and as we continue to reflect on his plan, even to seek and save in our Lord Jesus, that's always been God's desire. As we, again, this is kind of a heavy theme to, to think about over these first 10 and 11 chapters of, uh, of the scriptures, we see then another reoccurrence of how sin escalates. In uh, Tower of Babel, Genesis 11, and that whole account um, we see that just like sin escalated after Adam, well, okay, it happens again after Noah. And over time, after the flood, humanity is left alone apart from God. Evil always escalates. Evil always escalates. And again, it's the saddest thing to witness whenever we see evil having escalated in our world, evil having escalated in our own personal lives. It's the most grievous thing when we see people harmed by one another, right? That Cain and Abel thing happens and we've remembered in prayer of victims of shootings and just horrific things even recently, of course, too, that have happened in our world and we grieve and we, we don't leave it at that place and that's why God has us here though still too, doesn't he? We're called to again to return to the promises of God, return to God's word and receive it and to share it as well. God is always intervening. And uh, again, the, the clearest way that we have seen God intervene as we look to the entirety of Scripture as well, as we've seen him inter- intercede and intervene throughout history, we ultimately look to the saving grace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ and how he has intervened in even that way of sending his own son. And we're going to celebrate God's gift in Jesus in a few moments in Holy Communion receiving that uh, promise and celebrating that promise. 
because uh, as we look to the rest of the story, and as we continue on, we'll see and affirm the rest of the Bible, God's story of his keeping his promises, how he keeps his promises, and makes this possible for us to enter into a loving relationship with him. Um, I'm amazed at how, again, God will do whatever it takes. And even in that story of Adam and Eve, how, how, how horrible and how troubling it is for us to think they refused God, how uh, they rejected God, and then the consequences of that. And uh, even the covering of Adam and Eve, yeah, we kind of joked about the leaves and covering of themselves, but they ended up, what, putting on animal skins and all that kind of thing. And just a reminder, okay, consequences of sin is the shedding of blood. And ultimately, our sin is covered. As again, we look to communion in a few moments. Our sin is covered through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, of his death, of his resurrection, and the hope that we have in him. So let's affirm one more promise of Scripture from the book of Hebrews. And I'd like you to read this with me as we close in prayer. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. He who promised is faithful. So stay in the Word. We're going to sort through and and go through all these passages. Go deeper in your groups, as I pray that you will, even some starting this week. Um, as we go to next week and we look to the, the reminder, okay, how's God going to do this? God's going to build a nation. We're going to look to Abraham. We're going to look at Genesis 12 and following. And you can both read through your, the scriptures. You can read through the Bible. You can read through the account as it's put together in the story. And uh, um, we're going to see again the full extent to which God goes to continue to communicate his love, to communicate his truth, to bring us back to him. And as we pray, if there's, this may be a season of renewal for you, maybe of returning to the Lord, of coming to the Lord in a new way through this season. Praise God for that. Maybe there's somebody on your heart that you're praying for that you ask, God, maybe there's, is there any way? How can I be a part of your plan to seek and save someone that's lost, someone that's maybe moved or drifted far from you? And can I be that instrument? How can I be used by you to, uh, to, to bless and to encourage someone to come back, to come back? And God's faithful. He'll do it. So let's uh, close in prayer as we uh, uh, go deeper into the promises of God and as we celebrate communion in just a moment. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, come before you humbly thankful for the promises of your word that are for sure, that are eternal, that are life-giving. And God, as you created us and all things, we give you thanks and praise for your amazing God. Uh, that we are not here by accident, we are not here by chance, but because of your love, you have made us in this world. And though it is broken, and though we have made choices and and decisions that have been contrary to your will, God, you continue to seek to uh, restore us back in relationship with you, and we are thankful. We are your thankful people here today. We humbly uh, give thanks again for your grace and mercy, for your death uh, in your son Jesus on the cross, for your resurrection and the eternal life that is found through faith and trust in you. So, Lord Jesus, come. Come to my heart. Come to the hearts of all that are here today. We receive you, Jesus. May our hearts be open to you, to your promise of restoration, of hope in the midst of any brokenness, in the midst of any illness, in the midst of any challenge, in the midst of any heartache. We just lay all these burdens at your feet, Lord thankful that we can come openly and honestly with all things, and you hear us and that you receive us. And Father, we pray for people going through the most difficult trials right now in this earth, in this life, with those that are battling the devastation of Hurricane Dorian, uh, those who have suffered in the Bahamas and the islands, and the people just trying to live day to day. Bless them. Bless those who mourn, those on the east coast that are battling, even right now too, and Uh, God, this is one glimpse of many things throughout the world where people are in need, but we pray for those in need, other needs and burdens that are on our hearts. We lift before you. Uh, Father, as we look into this week, too, we acknowledge uh, just the heaviness of the week ahead and remembering September 11th. And uh, Lord, we again just grieve for the evil and the brokenness in this world, but we give you Thanks and praise that you redeem and restore, even out of death itself. And so we place our hope in you, God. And we pray for a world that, uh, where people can be free, 
where people can be open to following you, trusting in you, and without fear of, of, of these evil things happening. So God, we just pray that you'd help us to do our part, to bring your hope and joy into a world that's broken. And God, it begins here at the foot of the cross, and so open our hearts now that we might receive you in Holy Communion, Jesus, your grace, your mercy, the forgiveness that we desperately need every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.